This is Tabletop Deathmatch, a competition to find the next great tabletop game. It was entertaining. I don't think I would buy this game. Everything sort of flowed logically. Game designers from all over the country sent their prototypes to us at Cards Against Humanity. We picked eight finalists, and now we're bringing them to Gen Con, the biggest tabletop gaming convention in the world, where they're going to pitch their prototypes to our panel of industry-leading judges. One game will win a first printing paid for by Cards Against Humanity and be crowned the winner of Tabletop Deathmatch. Gen Con's been really great. It's our first time coming here. We're actually even more excited to try out some of the games that other people brought to uh, Tabletop Deathmatch. It's kind of unreal. I, I think when we, we go in front of the judges and stuff, then we'll kind of be like, the, oh, all right, here we go, that point. But yeah, it, it's, been, it's been great so far, really being here and then just meeting all these other people who are, who are in a similar situation. It's just, it's been such a great experience and we're just so happy to have been chosen. Like, it's, it's yeah. just, it's mind blowing. Yeah. yeah. Hey Tom, hey Isla, thank you guys so much for coming to show us Skip Trace. Absolutely. Yeah. Can you give us like the very quick pitch of the game? Sure. So Skip Trace is a card game about a group of people looking to get some extra cash. And they do so by getting contracts from an organization called Skip Trace. Let me introduce you to the judges who are going to be playing the game. To my left we have Paul Peterson, creator of Smash Up and Guillotine. Annalisa Delphal, retail manager for Card Kingdom. Rodney Thompson, creator of Lords of Waterdeep. Mike Selinker, creator of the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game. Luke Crane, creator of Torchbearer and Burning Wheel. And Sherry Spiro, president and founder of Ad Magic. Why don't you guys bring the game over here and we'll get set up and uh, play a few rounds. So we, I feel like we probably have to tell the story of how we met and sure. um, you kind of uh, got involved in, in submitting a tabletop deathmatch. For season one, we kind of did a tour where we went to some different movie theaters and showed episodes of tabletop deathmatch and you came to the Seattle screening and we went out and played a game afterwards, and you came up to us with this, uh, with this proto, with these, was it these These, very, these were the exact ones. These, with those very index cards, and you're like, hey, do you guys want to see this game prototype? You know, we all love games, and we're like, yeah, we'd love to see it. And uh, a few me emails later, I was like, you should really submit this to Tabletop Deathmatch, and here we are. Yeah. Do you guys uh, want to set it up and, and run a few rounds for the judges, and I'll, I'll leave it to you? Sure. So the game used to actually be about bounty hunters. Uh, one of the major changes that we had to the game were these condition cards. Um, they used to be kind of a limiting factor. These are just some of the worst examples. Uh, mysterious illness has left you temporarily blind, deaf, and mute. The major mechanic change was the, um, these objective cards, which are essentially just a list of verbs. And the reason why we added those was because we felt that the game lacked a serious component that made it um, more fun, more modular, more interesting for players. So we decided to add those in and take out the conditions because we felt that those were too limiting for creativity. When the game designers explained the reason why they were changing the direction of the game, it was something I could understand and accept. Um, however, in the beginning, when they first presented it, it was a, a little disconcerting for me. I mean, I can see them struggling with it, and I can see they're uncomfortable with telling us about this process, but I was so excited to share this very visible design moment with them, this, like, where the, you know, the design process kind of surfaced, and it's incredibly productive. Uh, this is a moment that they're going to confront again and again and again, and if they can come out of this, uh, confident and you know kind of understanding the process looking back I mean in the moment it's just terrifying uh, but if they you know they can come out of this and turn around and say oh right that process was good uh, oh here it is again well, I understand what's happening now they're gonna get through it faster next time uh, and their designs are gonna be stronger for it so what's this game about currently now the game is about such as Moonlighters. It's about uh, you have a current profession and you really need more cash because your current profession really isn't providing enough. The game starts out by me and giving you guys all three profession cards. Out of those three, you're going to take one and then discard the other two. The whole Moonlight angle, I mean, that's okay, but it's not super appealing. Like trying to sell someone on like, this is the game where you have a second job, that's not that's not a pitch, right? Thanks for coming to uh, joining the organization of Skip Trace. Uh, I just want to briefly, I want to hear your names, uh, what your profession is, and uh, why why, why your current profession isn't providing enough cash for you. My name is Mr. Now. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got a little problem in that my 1-800 number actually ends up spelling something foul. <laughs> so I, uh, I've got to get that taken care of. I need a little extra cash so I can get it changed and refilm the infomercial, so. 
My name is Ambrosia and I'm a bartender and I don't make nearly enough money because I make really shitty drinks. <laughs> <laughs> I be a sea captain called Old Woody. <laughs> because I, I, I have two peg legs. And unfortunately there are lots of knots in the deck of my ship, so they get stuck. I couldn't hear any of you! <laughs> <laughs> I've been listening to too much Sex Pistols, and so I can't hear anything anymore. So I'm gonna get some hearing aids and maybe listen to some Barry Manilow instead. I like this kind of game that Skip Trace is because the format allows people to express themselves and it also validates their responses. Uh, I'm Judd, I'm a librarian, and uh, I need a second job because librarians get paid shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm Morticia, the mortician, and uh, nobody's dying because everybody's taking this great holistic stuff, so I, I really need a second job. Or it's card to murders. The one thing I found about the profession cards were that they seemed really limiting. I would have preferred something like traits um, to use that would give me a little bit more room to move around uh, when I was playing the game. So now we're into the main game. The way this works is I'm gonna deal out three item cards to everyone. Each person will get a chance to play the role of what's known as the director. The director's job is to create a mission out of these three cards. This is our target card, our objective card, and our location card. I like these kind of party games where you know one person lays out a situation, other people uh, have a hand of cards that they throw down to, to try to match that situation and then the, the judge picks the one that they really like or that they just think is the funniest. I, I especially like that. Okay, so I was gonna fly to Vegas to get some more classes on pouring drinks when I came across this internet troll living under a bridge. And I got so pissed off with him that I thought it would be a good idea to tickle him a little bit, like maybe lighten him up a little bit. But he ended up really messing with the circuits on my airplane and now I'm stranded. I was hoping that I would love it more than I did and I think it's because I was expecting something a little bit different. Um, I felt like maybe I just didn't understand what I was doing in the beginning, but that it could have been more streamlined uh, to be more easily understandable. Old Woody's gonna wait until the plane gets below the mountain range and use his hang glider to swoop down to land on it. Then donning me hoodie of invisibility, I'll creep inside the plane and tickle him before you can hear the rattle of me peg legs. <laughs> The way you deal with something like that is you scare them. That's why I have all these piercings through various parts of my brain. So I'm gonna scare them with a man-eating rose bouquet that I've put in the, uh, uh, in the restroom. And then when he runs out with his arms up in the air, that's when I hit him with the summoning spirit stick. The biggest thing that the game needs isn't mechanical, and really it's not even that content related. It, they need to pick a theme, a, a narrative theme, and stick with it and buy into it and follow it, right? Everything they've got right now are all the kind of right components to create a lot of different kinds of these games, right? Like, is this an Old West game? Or is this a super spy game? Or something, let me make the elevator pitch to people. But right now, it's trying to sit in a really sort of generic and vague middle ground. And until you fix that, I'm not gonna be able to sell this game to my friends on game night, right? If it's just a generic comedy game, I've got that already. Yeah. I, I can do this. <laughs> Couldn't hear. Couldn't hear. Uh, I, uh, well, as you know, librarians are researchers, so I would, um, you know, research the postings, the appropriate uh, forum posts and his blog, uh, or her blog, and find out uh, what he or she likes to read, uh, or what he or she is reading, and uh, I would, um, or it is reading, I guess. <laughs> book a seat next to them on the plane, bring that book, strike up a conversation, and then offer my Chinese finger trap. Right? Just kind of like, oh, we're talking about the book, and you know, and then, oh, we're stuck, and then start. <laughs> <laughs> so you're gonna be like, can I interest you in a Chinese finger trap? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, something, something along those lines, yeah. Playing Skip Trace was, it's all right. Game's not really done, so you know we can we can make our own fun with it. Um, you know, Mike and Paul, Rodney, Elisa, Sherry. I mean, everybody's such a skilled game player. It's really easy for us to pick up a game and just kind of run with it and enjoy it on our own merits. Uh, 
I don't, but I, I'm not certain that the this game is done enough that it was giving us a lot of it, um, direction as far as the fun goes. I'm um, curious why you went as far as you did to change the theme. Like you didn't <laughs> have to go that entire distance. You could have just said, "This is a contract to do this to that person yeah. in this yeah, place," yeah, right? Yeah. And and it's just a comedic bounty hunting yeah. film. Uh, I suppose we could have gone with that, but I guess just realistically, I mean, we were, we were, I guess we were very caught up in semantics and we're very uh, focused on making sure that people kind of understood intuitively what role they would be playing. Mm -hmm. And if they were like a bounty hunter and they had to go tickle somebody, they'd be like, well, do bounty hunters really do that? Um, so there's sort of a weird interplay there. I do see your point, but... I mean, do salty sea captains actually go do stuff like that? I suppose not. Uh, yeah, but if you're looking for extra cash, maybe they will. They added the objective cards, which is great. I think it's great for the game. Um, they now have to just sort of figure out what their theme is maybe a little better, and then um, try to figure out uh, how all the pieces come together. There's probably a couple too many card types. There's probably something that can be done with flavor text or a, a supported text that would help a lot. I mean, they're, they're pretty close. They just need to uh, just refine it a little bit. I think they'll make a great game. Thank you guys so much for um, running us through a round. We're gonna kick you guys out into the hallway. We're gonna hold on to your prototype and we're gonna discuss the game. Okay. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, we think it really went well. Yeah. yeah. It seems like the judges were really engaged in the game and they really enjoyed playing it, which is really cool to see. Yeah. yeah. All right, judges, what do we think of the game? Um, well, right from the beginning, I was a little confused when I was handed the three cards and told to tell a story, mm -hmm. and that's why I told a story, but really, I, they just wanted me to lay out the cards. I was expecting it to be a smoother play. I may not have understood the directions as much as I should have at first, um, but again, with such a sim simple style of game playing, I should have been able to just jump in and do it. I want to know what you think of this game. I mean, you know, this is I, this I is know, cards against humanity. I know I didn't want to say it. I said yeah. I was like other games like I was apples and apples, for somebody but I, to say it. I just cards against humanity is not an original idea. We we did a great execution of our thing, and um, where I think, I mean, they, so here's my opinion of this because I've I've played this a few times. I think they're they're in an in a copywriting sense. They're in an uncomfortable um, middle of like they're trying to thread the needle between being like you know, silly, offensive, Cards Against Humanity kind of humor and just like really committing to the, the goofy, you know, kind of fiasco world of the game. I think its biggest problem is that it doesn't know what its genre is, right? I mean, does it want to be a generic comedy card game? Well, that's one thing, right? Or does it want to be a highly thematic comedy card game? They can still be of the same weight, but it doesn't really have its identity locked down yet, and that's its greatest weakness. I think the premise for this game is disastrously bad in a lot of ways, right? Like, I've got a second job. Wow, that sounds really entertaining. Like, tons of people actually have second jobs, and like, there's no clear, like, what's the elevator pitch for this game that makes me want to play it? Like, if this was, you know, Smoke and Aces, like, we're all a bunch of wacky assassins or whatever like that. It needs enough direction that I understand what kind of narrative I'm trying to build, because right now, that was a big problem with, like, Annalisa had a hard time figuring out what kind of story she was trying to tell. They're headed in a direction, but they're not ready to admit it. And maybe it's the constraints of the contest, or, or uh, you know, maybe it's just that they're nervous about committing. I mean, I, I think they're clearly leaning in a direction uh, for the game, and I think they just have to kind of close their eyes and go with it and, and abandon uh, the previous concepts and really just commit to this design. Yeah. How did it go for you guys? Uh, yeah, I think we all had the same kind of experience yeah. where it was fun, but it was so. They were incredibly intense with something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but there's a lot of constructive feedback you get out of it too. <laughs> yeah. So. I feel like the worst things though, like you, you kind of already know. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. You, you, yeah. You just have to look at it. Different. And even yeah. if you, even if you haven't been told, it's kind of like, well, I guess I had thought about that, yeah. but. Yeah. You know. So one of the things that I do like about this mechanically is when I'm playing games like Dixit. Um, after a while, I know what all the pictures are, and we sort of have ideas about like phrases we want to use for the pictures and stuff. But after a while, you just want to see new pictures. And the fact that there's a three-card combo here means that you, you're not going to see that combo again for a long time. So I kind of I really do like that bit. I like the design too. I really do. I, I, you can tell which card I, is which. It's not so confusing. So but I, I, that won't sell itself. On no, my of course. I mean, we have tables that are designated party games. But unless it was on that table, I don't think that it would 
uh, scream that to a customer walking by. So I would be a little bit concerned about the packaging. To, to my taste, this is the best design of any of the prototypes. I think it's beautiful. I think, I mean, I really couldn't, couldn't find a nit to pick in the execution of this design. But unfortunately, I think it's the best design with the theme of this game, which is very ambiguous. Like, I think Emily, who did the design, read the copy on these cards and was like, what is, what is this? Like, what is the thing that encompasses this? What's great about this game is that the fundamentals are so solid. It has great colors, it has great typography, it has great composition. It's consistent so that all the cards form a set with each other, and it's special. It really evokes like a, like a cool kind of a spy theme without punching you in the face with it. It's just a, it's just a beautiful little minimalist design. This is, minimalist design is really, really hard to do well, and this is great. It's really weird to be pitched a game that is that in this contest that is in a transitional state. They submitted it with a certain objective. We accepted it under that objective. And now it gets to us and like we're not going that direction. It feels like it's not in the spirit. This is going to be this is going to be a tough one because the version in my imagination is is incredible and the version on the table is is flawed. They seem like wonderful people. They've got a really good game that they started with, which needed some fixes and so forth, and they brought us a game that was some other game, and then some point, a few months from now, we'll have a different game. That's great, but it's not this contest, and so I, it just basically wasted my time. The original game that Max and Rodney and Paul and I played, you had a target and a location in which you had to capture or kill them, and you were given, I believe, some number of items and a condition card that you had to deal with. So putting aside the condition card, which they didn't like and, and abandoned, right? The, the general concept was like, okay, I got to kill a priest inside a prison with a jet pack. Well, that sounds great, but I don't feel like I can judge that because that's not what we played. I know, I know. Uh, so, but, yeah. but I can judge what we played and I liked the objectives. I like, after playing this, it feels limiting that we're only killing or capturing. Right. That, fit, that fits the, the, the bounty hunter story great, but that doesn't fit this story. And or tickling or uh, eliminating or selling or augmenting or rescuing. I think those are interesting and those gives us better hooks for the story. Like, oh, we have to we have to rob the internet troll or we have to rescue the internet troll from an airplane. That's, that's cool, you've already got a story about why he needs to be rescued on the airplane, right? Uh, it seems to me that this game is in the process of being created, uh, especially since they've changed it since they submitted it to what we actually played. They had a, a, an interesting idea to add the objectives in and they did so, but that means that they've made a significant change to it and it's sort of colored everything that they're doing uh, in the game now. Uh, so I would really recommend that, I mean, the, the next recommendation is to start testing that and seeing whether they like it, take our input on it, and, and see if they need to change the game even further. It, it's really creating a new game out of what they already had. I think there's a middle ground that, that can get from here to this set of cards that isn't the game they actually showed us. Right? Like, oh, that's so heartbreaking. I know. <laughs> they need to say, like, this is the thing that grounds the game. It's about this, and we're going to make all the other decisions based on that one thing. And, you know, they have a lot of different options there. They could make it about the characters. They could make it about the job that needs to be done. They could make it about the theme. But right now, it's like a little bit of everything everywhere, and it kind of like, I just feel like it doesn't have its feet on the ground. All right, well, should we call them back in and let them know what we thought? Guys, thank you so much for showing us Skip Trace. No problem. We really liked how having three cards out gave a lot of variety and a lot of replayability to the game. And the copywriting is hysterical. I mean, the the, the names of the objects and the locations and stuff like that, that's, that's genius stuff. One of the biggest things the game struggles with right now is that it lacks a really clear premise as far as its narrative. And I think that really hurts it because it makes it hard to figure out how to jump into the story. And as people who are participating in the storytelling, we felt like the game wasn't firmly grounded enough in the characters, and we weren't satisfied with the characters that we were given to play with. So thank you guys so much. We'll see you again at the final judging. Okay, thank you. Thanks. The positive feedback was, yeah, we're, we're really pleased with that. Um, and the, the, uh, the constructive stuff definitely didn't make sense in terms of the whole, whole narrative thing. Um, that's definitely something that been actively struggling, struggling with, and uh, I know for me, quite frankly, I'm you know, probably overthinking how to construct the narrative. It just needs to be simple. But yeah, that's kind of how I feel. I mean, I I felt that way. I think going into it and hearing them say that kind of validated some of my feelings about some of the issues that we had been struggling yeah. with. So.
uh, at least mechanically wise, I think it's in a pretty darn good spot. There are, are a few things, absolutely the storytelling component, I think needs to be articulated much more succinctly and, and clearly. Um, and, and I think that's the ultimate thing that, that needs to be done. Mm -hmm.